decided to do my presentation on the constitutionality of the death penalty and its relation to um, capital punishment here in the United States. The idea of capital punishment or the death sentence, or death penalty rather, is legally described as the execution of offender sentenced to death after being heard by a jury and the jury feels that their offense or whatever they did to end up in court what would, would consider themselves be deemable for the death penalty. However, there are certain states that do have the death penalty and certain states that don't. If an individual were to create like a heinous crime, a murder or something, in a state where the death penalty is not considered legal, which is 19 states out of the total 15 in the United States, automatically, you know, they could not be considered uh, eligible for the death penalty. However, in the, in the remaining 31 states, if an individual were to commit a heinous crime and the jury were to convict them of the death penalty, they could be, you know, sentenced to death and put on death row. Currently, there are 1,264 people that have been executed via the death penalty since 1972. And 1972 was the year where the Supreme Court really kind of took control of the idea of constitutionality in relation to the death penalty. And as of January 1st, 2016, there are 2,943 individuals still on death row awaiting for, you know, that day when the state deems it them eligible for execution, if you will. Um, a couple of individuals that, you know, are really, really famous, if or infamous rather, um, for being executed via the death penalty is Eileen Wernos. She was executed in 2002 for the murder of Richard Malloroy and Ted Bundy, which a lot of people know. He's an infamous, unfortunately, woman killer, if you will. He had an unknown amount of killings in 1970, and he was executed in 1989. Now, the, the basis of constitutionality of the death penalty is a big debate in the United States. The idea that the death penalty is taking a life away from an individual based on certain crimes is something that is rooted in both the Eighth Amendment, which is cruel and unusual punishment, and also the idea of humanity in and of itself. And a couple of justices, in a case I will describe in a little bit, kind of... They, they, don't, they don't agree with it because of the fact that it kind of goes against humanity and for everything that we stand for. Now, the Eighth Amendment is cruel and unusual punishment. Um, the U.S. court has ruled on numerous occasions that torture goes against the Eighth Amendment, obviously. However, they have never ruled that the death penalty is a form of cruel and unusual punishment, only in a couple instances where I will again describe in a little bit. However, more than 80% of states that have the death penalty, so the 31 out of the 55, have a lower number of murder and homicide rates um, in relation to their counterparts of the 19 states that do not have it. You know, and this could be, you know, related to maybe it serves as a deterrent for criminals who, you know, are thinking about or are going to commit a murder. Maybe they, you know, either won't or unfortunately they'll do it in, maybe in another state where the death penalty is not the is not considered legal and they couldn't be sentenced to death. But in those states, statistically, homicides are lower. Now, there is a major case, Furman versus Georgia, which is a federal case that brought would that was brought to the Supreme Court that was tried because um, they didn't believe that under existing statutes during that time that carrying out the death penalty was considered unconstitutional. However, the court did rule in a five to four decision saying that the death penalty did not violate the Eighth Amendment. Therefore, in that case, you know, it would be considered not legal, but they could, you know, give that death penalty to that case or to that individual who's being tried for that. And in this case, this is what I was talking about. Judge Marshall ruled on the idea. Obviously, he was at, five, he was at four count. Um, he ruled that the idea of death penalty went against the idea of humanity and that all that it stood for. You know, as human beings, we are giving individuals and not and necessarily the death penalty wouldn't agree with a lot of people, you know, taking the life, even though that they committed such a heinous crime, maybe wouldn't agree with everyone. And that does, you know, kind of tie back to the idea of, un of the constitutionality of the death penalty in and of itself. Um, since 1976... Um, there has been many death penalty cases that the Supreme Court helped on when deeming if it were legally or constitutional for the death penalty to be used in certain cases. And since that time, you know, in 2002, the, the Supreme Court ruled that individuals or defendants who are deemed 
you know, mentally incapacitated in some way could not be given the death penalty, regardless of what state it was committed in. You know, if it was committed in a state where they do have the death penalty or they don't, they could not be considered eligible for the death penalty because of the state in which they're in. Also in 2005, the court ruled that the death penalty cannot be imposed on those who are younger than 18 years old when the crime was committed. So if a person, let's say, unfortunately, murdered or killed someone when they were 16, 17, but they were being tried when they were 21, they wouldn't be able to, to receive the death penalty because during that time in which they committed the crime, they were younger than 18 years old. And all of this kind of goes back to the, to the main, main topic of death penalty in relation to its constitutionality. The main reason for this debate is automatically goes back to the idea of the Eighth Amendment, cruel and unusual punishment. Is this considered cruel and unusual punishment if someone who were to commit a heinous crime be eligible and, and convicted and executed via the death penalty? And also the idea of humanity. You know, should we as individuals, as human beings on earth, be able to sentence someone to death because of their crimes. And even though crimes could be horrible, heinous, you know, just unspeakable crimes, not necessarily is it our place, but should we even be allowed to give that sentence to someone and, you know, end their life? Or should they just be sentenced to life in prison? And should they sit there and have to think about their crimes? You know, this this is a huge debate and it it doesn't end now and it's not, you know, it hasn't reached an end point and it might not ever reach an end point. You know, there are so many debates and quarrels over this idea and, you know, it'll, it will only end when either it's completely outlawed or it's a federal regulation for, you know, certain crimes to automatically get that sentence. And that's it. Thanks for listening.